Good morning, Streamline Church. If you can please stand to your feet, we're going to get started this morning. How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. We are excited to honor and exalt and glorify the King of Kings, the Lords of Lords this morning. Why don't you help us with your hands this morning? Amen. Good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Sing it out, people from every nation. People from every 
this morning, Streamline Church, that our God is good all the time. We honor you, Jesus. This morning, let us sing it out together that who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. We worship you. Oh, 
just begin to worship him for who he is. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you because we have seen your hand this week. We thank you for your mercy, God, for your grace that is new every morning. We thank you, God, because you call us yours, God.
lift your hands. Come on, some of you need to fight some battles this morning. You just need to give it to the Lord so he can fight it. This is how I fight. We surrender to you this morning, God. We surrender to you. This is how I this morning, Father. We sing it out. That we surrender to you, God. That is how we fight our battles, Lord. With praise and thanksgiving in our mouth, God. That is how we fight our battles, Lord. This morning, we give it all to you, God. Whatever we may be facing, God. Whatever struggles we may be seeing, Father God, financially, God, or with our family, Father God, with sickness, Lord. This morning, we give it up to you, Lord. For you fight for us, God. Because even though we may feel like we're lost, even though we may feel like we're alone, you, we are surrounded by you, God. This morning, we believe it with all of our hearts that this is how we fight our battles. glory and all the praise forever and ever and ever. How many believe that this morning? Amen. Amen. We honor him. Give him a hand this morning. Amen. Amen and amen. Welcome to Streamline Church. Amen. We are so happy that you have come to worship and exalt the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. For those that are online, we welcome you as well. Uh, why don't you get out of your seats this morning and just greet someone. Tell them it is good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. How's it going, Streamline Church? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Streamline Church. Such, such a blessing to be in the house of the Lord today, right? We're so glad that you could worship with us today. If you're watching with us online, we're glad to have you as well. Um, my name is Pansy. I'm the women's leader, and this is... Eli Galindo. Yeah. The famous Eli uh, Galindo. I don't know about that. <laughs> Um, we, we just, we're so happy to be here this morning. Um, we want to go over some quick announcements together. Yeah. The first one is Passion Worship. That's coming up very soon, November the 7th at 6 p.m. What's Passion Worship, you say? Well, it's a night of doing what you just did times 10. So if you love that, you've got to be here for that. And um, I almost forgot regarding the welcome. I did too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're new with us today... <laughs> We're happy to have you. I'm sorry, I was unprepared. We're happy to have you. We want to connect with you. So our beautiful ushers, Athena and Jamila, woo, woo, woo. Um, they have uh, some cards. So if you're new with us, this is your first time, raise your hand. They'll give you a card and we'll get connected with you. Yep. And if you're new with us online, make sure you hit the drop down in the link and give us your information and we'll reach out and connect with you. Yeah. And then there's a welcome bar outside, right? Where they can get a gift. Yeah, th so there's a t-shirt yeah. available if you're new with us also. So hit up the welcome bar after church. Sweet. And someone will be there to help you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for saving me. Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Passion Night, again, just want to remind you of that. It's amazing time of worship and getting together. Um, and then we have a thing coming up for the ladies, right? A thing? A we thing. have a thing it's, coming it's up for thing. the ladies. I don't know. I don't know what to call it, so... <laughs> So we have a ladies brunch coming up. Um, as you guys know, we're, we're all about community, right? We want to be part of God's community. We want to lift each other up. And so we have events uh, regularly. So our, our next ladies event is a brunch coming up. It's going to be a, a fancy, like a, fancy. a luxury picnic here inside the sanctuary. So I'm excited. We're going to have some really nice 
food and some community time together. And so I would love to see all you ladies here. Um, there's a sign up in the back uh, next to the donation station. You can sign up there too. It's a $10 fee um, for everything that's provided. Or you can find me, hit me up, um, or just drop an email into the church. So hope to see you guys so there. So good food, good conversation. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be on yeah. the 30th at 10 a.m. Sweet. Uh, yeah, so. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we want to transition to offering real quick. Um, who in the house just knows that God blesses us, not just when we give of our finances, when we give of our heart, our mindset, whatever we're doing in life, when we give to him, he gives back, doesn't he? Right? And offering is, it is a form of worship. Did you know that? It is a form of worship. The word says the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not money. It's it's the thing that does it does to us. And I think that that's powerful in that when we give 10% back to God of what he has given us, it's empowering. It's It releases you. I don't know how to explain it other than that. You've just got to give it a try and give God. And get, try to get out, give, out give God, I dare you. I, I double dare that. you. Yes. Right? Come Amen. on, somebody. Somebody Amen. in the back right there. Um, so we're going to pray for the offering. But before we do, there's a few ways you can give today. So online, they're dropping a link in right now for you. Um, you can text to this number. Um, and then also we have the website, streamlinechurch.com. And then back on that wall, it's called the Donation Station. I love that. Whoever came up with that, that was a good idea. Okay, so it's on the back wall, so you can stop there. And, of course, the ushers will be here at the end of service as well if you'd like to drop a check or some cash in there. So would you bow your heads with us this morning as we pray for this offering? We're going to pray, pray blessings over the finances this morning. Lord God, you are so good to us. You are there for us when we don't deserve it. And I'm speaking about myself right now. You're there for us when we have needs. You're there for us when we're blessed with grandbabies and children and family and a good job. You're there for us at all times. And Lord, we just pray blessings over this offering, these tithes, because it goes to help the community we're in, the very people in this room, Lord, and online. We pray blessings and multiplication over Jesus. In your name we pray. And everybody said? Amen. 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 We got a quick video for you. Check it out. On the outside in the summer heat, you can pay the cover charge. I'm in the street. Little did they know that they can't touch me. I'm vibing, vibing. I'm on the outside in the summer heat. You can pay the cover charge. I'm in the street. Little did they know that they can't touch me. I'm vibing, vibing. Did, okay, who knows what that's about? Yell it out. Youth, youth convention. Youth convention. Come on, guys. This is youth convention. All oh, of our teenagers are here. Wait, let's try that again. Okay, okay. Do you guys know what that was about? Youth. Yeah, that's right. I like that. I like that. So youth convention has changed the lives of many youth all around the world. They have conferences placed out everywhere. You guys wouldn't even believe. But we really, really want the teenagers of this church and this community to go. The price is $75. I need a $45 deposit by November 3rd. If you have any questions, if you have any questions, please meet here. I'm going to be having an outreach meeting uh as well, right here. Right after church. Right after church, right here. Yeah. I want your youth to go so badly. And again, the outreach people, please meet here too as well. Don't yeah. know what I'm talking about both. But I'll give you guys more information as you guys come up. Yeah. And then there's going to be a table in the foyer, right, if you want to get more information as well after service. Yes, yes. Like if you guys can't stay so long or you guys have to jet out of here, Jeremiah will be back there with some forms that he can give to you guys to sign up, to sign some permission uh, slips, or just even sign up our waivers to yep. help out next uh, in the next couple of weeks. Cost is $75. We're looking for people in this church that want to bless youth. If you, oh, I see a hand already. Yes, I love it right there. Oh, come amen. On, come on. Come on. Give, give it up. up. Give it up. Give it up. Uh, we want to do a scholarship for our youth and get them there because it's so powerful. It could change their life. Who in this room, raise your hands, if you've been to a youth event and it impacted you when you were younger? Yeah. 
That mountain, I'm serious right now. When they go to this event, the energy in that room, the spirit of God just touches their world. And we want to do that and support that. So talk to Josh. By the way, Josh, did you introduce yourself? Maybe, maybe some folks. Hey, guys, if you guys don't know me, I'm Josh, the youth director. I, uh, I actually help out with the youth group every Wednesday at 630. And I love them all, and they're spectacular. Awesome, man. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate all you do, brother. Love you guys. And then midweek service, this is the next thing, and then we're going to get straight into the Word of God this morning. Midweek service, we've been doing every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. right here. We set up a bunch of tables right here in the front area, and we go into the book of Revelation. Have you ever wondered, like, have you ever read that book, like, really slowed down to read it? And, you know, I think some of us might be a little bit fearful of that book, if we're just being honest. And, right? True talk, right? But you, you need to come in here because it's actually... Very encouraging. So be here at 6.30 and, and you get to hear about that. So without further ado, my good friend and Jared, Jared McCackering. Come on up here, bro. Come on up here. All right. Thank you. <laughs> We're so Thank proud you. to have you, man. So quick story, just so you guys know. Um, we, went to, did, we went to the same high school. You're younger than me, young man. Yes. <laughs> But uh, I went to school with his brother, and then, you know, we didn't know each other that well back then because of the age difference. But, yeah, the Mac- McCacherins are right here in my heart, you know. And so, bro, bless, bless us with the word of God this Awesome. Morning. Thank you, Amen. Eli. Thank you, Josh. And welcome, Streamline Church. I'm so excited for those that are watching online. Excited to be with you in your living rooms, in your car, on your commute, or maybe you're cooking dinner getting a chance to hear the word this morning. I believe God is going to speak to you today. I do want to say one thing about youth convention. I used to be youth pastor, used to go to youth convention. Let me tell you, there is no greater uh, place for a young person to encounter God. It's like a greenhouse for growth. And if you've been having trouble with your teen, you've been having issues, I would encourage you, sow a seed, send a kid, get your kid, force them to go, do whatever you can, get them in a place where God can speak to them. When God's voice speaks to you, it changes the whole direction of your life. It gives you a destiny. It gives you a plan. And I believe that if you can just um, find those, those places where God's spirit is moving, do whatever you can. Make any sacrifice that you can. Um, real quick, as I was driving here, um, I just heard the Lord say this, uh, don't give up, it's time to press in. Some of you have been going through some challenging situations, some seasons, and I just felt like the Lord wanted to encourage you. There's a scripture in 2 Kings chapter 6, and there's an army surrounding um, Elisha, and he says this, don't be afraid, the prophet, the prophet answered, those who are with us are more than those who are against us. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked, and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. See, in in certain situations that you're walking through, you'll actually feel overwhelmed. Have you felt overwhelmed lately? The last year and a half has been an overwhelming feeling of uncertainty, of fear, of unbelief. Don't know what to do. You can't plan ahead. Everything was turned upside down. And in seasons of uncertainty, it's important to spend time in the presence of God. It's important to understand what season you're currently in and what you are supposed to do with all of that. If you just buy into the narrative that life is never going to be the same, what you buy into is hopelessness. The Bible says in Proverbs that uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And if you lay around feeling sick all the time and having no hope, you can't be effective in the kingdom. Why? Because the Bible says in Hebrews, without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. So what's really happening is there's an assault on your faith. There's an assault on the very thing that you're called to walk in. There's been an assault and an attack on the very nature of how you came to Christ in the first place. Those that are watching online, let me encourage you right now. You put your faith in Jesus Christ. Perhaps you'll do it for the first time today, or maybe it was 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. You're an OG in the church, and you're just like, I've been walking with the Lord a long time. Did you know it took faith to actually take that step, to actually believe that one day when you stand before the God of the universe, 
and all of your sins are laid bare right in front of you, and the feeling of conviction overwhelms you, and then all of a sudden to believe that it wasn't your good deeds, it wasn't your church attendance, it wasn't your tithing record, it wasn't any of those things, but it's simply the blood of Jesus that covers you for all of your sins once and for all. It takes faith to believe that because in other religions, you earn your way into heaven. But with Christianity, it's simply by faith. It's a precious gift that we receive. And it not only takes faith to follow Jesus, but it takes faith to continue to follow Jesus. Because when you follow Jesus, he puts you in way over your head. He puts you in crazy situations. Have you ever noticed that? You ever notice that following Jesus isn't always glamorous and easy? It isn't always, I bet if we asked every single person on this worship team, is your life perfect? Do you always just sing like angels? Do you always strum the guitar perfectly in sync and harmony? Man, the way you play the drums, life just must be grand for you and perfect in all areas of your life. Why? Because you're a follower of Jesus, right? No. They would say, man, if I could tell you what's really going on, I'm hanging on by a thread, but I've got my anchor in Jesus Christ. He's the only reason I'm here today. He's the only reason I'm able to do what I'm doing. That's the truth. And so many times in this, in this instant gratification culture and what we see on social media is we see a picture of something, but we don't know the backstory. We don't know the pain. We don't know the sacrifice. We don't know the heartache. We don't know what's going on. You may be feeling like giving up. God wants to tell you, don't give up. Today, it's time to press in. Today, it's time to keep your hands to the plow. Today, it's time to engage your faith and believe. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe you feel like your marriage, your relationship is on the rocks. Maybe you feel like it's time to throw in the towel. Is it even worth it? Maybe those thoughts have even crossed your mind. Let me tell you, it's not time to throw in the towel. It's time to lean into your spouse. It's time to lean in and look in their eyes and tell them it's going to be okay. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says this. Do not grow weary in well-doing, for at the proper time, if you don't give up, you will see a harvest. It's harvest season. It's a harvest season in your own personal life, in your marriage, in your finances. That's why Eli was saying, try to outgive God. Let me tell you, I have sown some extravagant seeds sometimes, and every time I did, I didn't want to. I didn't want to put the money in the, I didn't go like, uh, I know the Bible loves a cheerful giver, but I've been a hesitant giver most of my life. But I know the Lord is faithful. He always shows up. I, I'm, I'm sure of it. <laughs> Pastor Dave, if you're watching, your church is alive and well. The, these people here love you. They love you. Well, I need to go to my notes now and let you know that my name is Jared McAachran. I'm going to introduce myself, and uh, I am the Northern California State Director with Fellowship of Christian Athletes. It's a big title. It doesn't really mean too much, except that we go to campuses all over Northern California, share the gospel, see kids make decisions to follow Christ, plug them into local churches like this one. And so there is a revival that's happening on the campuses all over Northern California. Let me tell you, I have been praying for a revival for 10 years. Is that too much to ask? Is revival too much to ask? Because every time I say it, sometimes the enemy just whispers, you'll never see it. And I say, well, I'm going to keep preaching about it. I'm going to keep believing that God is going to send a great awakening like he has many times. I'm going to believe that he is not going to bypass California, that there's not going to be a big earthquake, and Arizona and Oregon's going to have, you know, uh, oceanfront property. No, I believe California, the golden state, is ripe and ready for a move of God. And he wants to use us. He wants to use you. He wants to position you. And that's why there's so much opposition against us right now. That's why there's so many people fleeing California. I am going to laugh when they start coming back. I am going to go, hi, how are you doing? Oh, the prices are a lot higher now that you left. I don't know what you're going to do about finding a house. You shouldn't have left. You shouldn't have left because you were afraid you should have stayed here and plowed with us and not given up. Because a harvest is coming. A harvest in your family is coming. Do not give up. You have to believe this is the time to press in. This is the time to start pushing away the plate of food every once in a while and insert fasting into your life. It's time to start spending more time in his presence. His presence is where you're going to find the strength. His presence is where he's going to speak. And all of a sudden, the Bible says without, his faith comes by hearing. And if we need more faith, we need to spend more time in his presence, hearing his words. 
when we read it, then he echoes it right back to us. It's a, it's a powerful moment. So I'm, my name's Jared. I'm with FCA. I said that. All right, what else do I need? Oh, I'm, I'm married. I have been married for 19 years. I have five children. It was, you're looking at me, you're like, how does that guy married for 19 years? Let me, t-. there was an arranged marriage. I was 12. She was 11. Okay, they still do those things. Uh, but no, we were young though. We were 19 and 20 when we got married. There's my wife. She's walking in the room. Those online, you cannot see her, but she'll be up here in a little bit. Candace McCachron, my beautiful bride, so excited to have you. Uh, there's a scripture in Luke chapter 10, verse 2, and I apologize. You won't probably see that on any of this because um, I didn't give it to him ahead of time, but Luke chapter 10, verse 2 says this. The harvest is plentiful. These are the words of Jesus. These are the words of red. These are the words that Jesus said to his closest followers 2,000 years ago. These words are even more true now than when Jesus said them. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are, free, are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send laborers or workers into his harvest field. It is harvest season right now. It is harvest season. Do you believe it? Do you believe it's harvest season right now? Do you believe it? Ask yourself that question. Do I really believe it? I hope by the end of this message you will believe it. There's an awakening happening right now. We've been praying for a long time for friends, for their children to come back to the Lord. Do you, if, you know, if you have a need for someone to come back to the Lord, would you just raise your hand right now? You have someone that's walked away. All right, we got 100% participation in the audience today. And those watching online, you have somebody you've been praying for, and sometimes it feels like you just want to give up, right? You just want to throw in the towel. You just feel like there's no hope. They're never going to come back to the Lord. Haven't you seen what they're doing? Haven't you seen the craziness that they're up to? It's just, they're so far gone, there's no hope. We've been praying, and we have been seeing God do miraculous things. The other night, we were at, uh, we were here in Elk Grove, um, just south of here, preaching at a church for a youth rally. And at the end of the message, we did a response time, and there was youth there. And then my wife gets up, and we were trying to, you know, close the service because it was getting late, you know, and we got little children. Two of our kids were already, like, sleeping on the, uh, yeah, that's what we do. We take our kids everywhere. They're sleeping there on the, you know, uh, the chairs. And then also my wife gets up, and she goes, it's not over yet. It's time for you to respond. You've been sitting back. God is getting me up here right now. And she's like holding a child, one sleeping on her shoulder, the other one's on the floor. She's like, I'm here to tell you, don't leave this place without giving your life to Christ. And this young lady with tears in her eyes stands up and her dad walks her down to the front. And she had been, she had been holding back and resisting Christ for years and years and years. And that moment, everything changed for that family. There's an awakening happening. The harvest is coming. Do you believe it? Do you feel it? Can you feel the anticipation inside of you right now? Do you have the faith to believe? As you question your own lives, as you question your own situations, and you look at the circumstances, this man in the Bible in 2 Kings chapter 6, his servant is telling the prophet Elisha, it's over. Our whole village, our whole city is surrounded. We are going to die. And Elisha had a word from the Lord. He had faith. He knew something that the servant didn't know. He knew something and someone was going to fight this battle for them. Do you know that God is trying to fight your battle for you right now? We were just singing it. This is how I fight my battles. But do you know that God sometimes steps in and just fights your battles? Sometimes he just says, enough, and he steps in. All of the prayers that you've been praying, they're going to be answered. Do you believe that? Do you believe that when it feels like the heavens are brass and there's nothing getting through, do you believe that God is going to answer your prayers? He is going to answer your prayers. In Luke chapter 1, we have the story of how John the Baptist came about. And in Luke chapter 1, John the Baptist, uh, his, his dad, Zachariah, is in the temple getting ready to burn incense before the Lord. It was just like hitting the lottery. It was this amazing, awesome opportunity. And as he's going in, all of a sudden... An angel of the Lord shows up, and he goes, Zechariah. Zechariah is like about ready to fall over because he's seeing an angel. He says, Zechariah, do not be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. 
And he says, your wife, Elizabeth, is going to give birth to a son. His name's going to be John. And he gives him this big prophecy. It was, it was awesome. But Zechariah is in his fourth quarter of his life. He's in his golden years. His wife's a golden girl. How are we going to do this? What do you mean? My prayer's been heard. I don't get it. We gave up praying that prayer 20 years ago. You mean that prayer's been heard? What if God is going to start answering the prayers that you gave up praying 20 years ago? What if he has never forgotten those prayers, but he's going to start answering them now? What if the one that you gave up on, what if the marriage, what if the relationship, what if the, the what if that severed connection from your father, God is going to restore that? I don't know who I'm talking to. Well, I do. It's Streamline Church. shouldn't say that. I think that's what preachers say all the time. I don't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> I just thought, I was like, I do know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to this audience and those watching online. <laughs> it just sounds like you're supposed to say that. Friends, family, I want to encourage you today. God is, start, is going to start answering prayers. We have some friends of ours, me and Candace, we've been praying for a long time for their kids to come back to the Lord. And we kind of, every once in a while, just, oh, Lord, I don't know. It looks pretty bleak. And in one moment, I got a phone call at 1 a.m. Everything changed. And in a matter of about 48 hours, the whole family was together in church, walking down to rededicate their lives to Christ. That's a good place for an amen. That's a good place to clap. You know, uh, Proverbs 10, verse 5, Proverbs 10, verse 5, uh, you can read this later, just write it down, and I would encourage you, there's a translation out there, kind of like the message, but it's called the Passion Translation, it's one of my favorites. It says this, Proverbs 10, verse 5, know the importance of the season you're in, and be, and a wise son you will be, but what a waste when an incompetent son sleeps through his day of opportunity. Understand and know what season you're in. Another thing, another version says when he sleeps during the the season of harvest. We are in a season of harvest. Now, right now, we think harvest, we think pumpkin spice lattes, we think pumpkins, we think pumpkin bread. Oh, my goodness. Every time I walk in the house, my wife's got either a candle or something in the oven. I just feel better about myself. I just feel like the life's going to be okay because the moment I get to inhale that aroma or I get to in, ingest some of that pumpkin pudding or pumpkin pie or pumpkin bread or pumpkin muffins, it's like life's going to be okay. And I also know, too, it's, it's It's the season of harvest, and it just makes you feel good. It gives you hope. It gives you expectation that something good is coming. Let me tell you, harvest is here. It's a season to believe for God to bring a great awakening, for God to bring salvation, for God to start seeing souls. We were on a a campus in Lodi High, and and we hadn't been there and been able to get on campus for a a year and a half because of covid and because of all the things that were going on in our country, the moment we got on campus and the doors get open, we usually would have, you know, 20 to 30 kids per lunch, and we'd have two lunches there. We were there a couple weeks ago. We opened the doors. There's 65, 70 kids per lunch, and over 35 kids make decisions to follow Christ. Why? Because it's the season of the harvest. It's because God is moving by his spirit. Acts chapter 2, it says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Your old men, that's me, are going to dream dreams. Your young men are going to see visions. Listen, we are in a season of harvest. Do not give up. Do not throw in the towel. It's time to press in. It's time to believe for more. Don't listen to the lies. Don't listen to the statistics either. I had a great uh, friend of mine, a pastor, send me a an article the other day, and he's just sharing all the statistics about what's going to happen in 20 years unless God does a miracle, okay? And it basically said that we will be a post-Christian nation. There, you know, churches will be empty. It will be much like Europe is where most churches turned into nightclubs and bars and different things. And there's going to be just a, a surge of these children that are right now alive having children 
and have no faith whatsoever. And he's like, what are we going to do? And, and what he wanted me to do is to say a response like this. I don't know, man. Oh, geez. Might as well just go find a bunker somewhere and just live underground. Wait it out until he comes back. But what, I, what came out of me was something a little bit more inspired by faith. I said, that's great that those statistics are out there, and let me tell you, but have they read that God's going to pour out his spirit, that all flesh, there's going to be a great awakening, and we're starting to see it. We're starting to believe it. We're starting to see the effects, like the birth pains, the beginning of people coming back to the Lord. There has been just a resurgence of people having the spiritual encounters with God. It's starting to happen. I believe it. I'm seeing it. Can you see it? Isaiah 43, 18 says this, I am doing a new thing. Can you see it? He actually says, he doesn't say I'm doing a new thing. And then he moves on. He says, can you see it? Can you see what God's doing all around you right now? Do you have eyes that are focusing on the good things or just the bad things? Are you only focusing on the things that are like polarizing in our nation right now and on the political spectrum and on social media. It's easy to get your mind fixated on what's wrong instead of seeing what's right. Woo, that is a good word. Praise the Lord. All right. I'm hearing you, preacher man. I want to see a harvest. I want to see souls saved. I believe... There's more for us than against us. I believe God's going to do something, okay? But I just don't feel it all the time. Just don't expect it all the time. I've got real life. I've got real problems. I've got crazy coworkers. I've got crazy family members. I'm in a just I'm just in a season just trying to get through this. How do I just how do I live in that place of expectancy? How do I live in that place of faith? And I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. It all is predicated on the proximity and how close you are to the Lord. The closer you get to the Lord, the more you are going to start feeling what he's feeling, seeing what he's seeing, burning for what he's burning for, and you it's, it's called intimacy. It's this word that you don't really hear too much these days. It's about having an intimate relationship with God, a close connection with him. Where, just like in a marriage, marriages fall apart when there's a lack of intimacy. And it's not just, it's not just a, a sexual thing. It is the thing about where you know you can walk into the room and you can sense with your spouse there's a tremblance in the force. I haven't even seen her yet. I haven't talked to him yet. What is going on? And I'm like, hmm. What did I do? And now you search yourself and you start to go through the history of conversations. You look through text messages and you're trying to figure out what was misconstrued, what was misinterpreted, and you're just trying to figure it out. That's intimacy. You've walked with somebody. You've lived with somebody. You understand somebody. You can sense when motions are out of alignment. That's, that's the covenant that you have in a relationship called marriage. You have that same covenant with God. So that when you would wake up in the morning and he would start speaking to you, you'd be like, Whoosh, I'm clearing this away. I'm turning off the news. I'm turning off ESPN. Wow, the Lord is speaking to me this morning. But then all of a sudden you don't feel his presence anymore. And then you stop. You're like, whoa, 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 what did I do? Something's wrong. Lord, I don't feel you like I normally feel you. And then you start to, what did I do? What did I say? What did I watch? What did I listen to? Lord, where did you go? Because I don't feel you. Are we walking so close to the Lord that we can sense when he's there, when he's resting on us, when he's not? Are we living in these places? You know, there was a man, when Jesus walked this earth, there was three close followers that he had, Peter, James, and John. But the closest follower he had was John. John actually gave him the name, gave, him, gave himself the title, I'm the disciple whom Jesus loved. And if you look at John, John lived so close and loved Jesus so much. Like when all the disciples deserted Jesus, you know, Peter, Peter's full of zeal. He walked on water. He's pretty crazy. 
But when Peter gets questioned by a little Girl Scout at the campfire, hey, aren't you one of his followers? He's like, no, hey, no, me. Oh, no, yeah, y'all, you're thinking of uh, Bartholomew. Yeah, he's over there. I would go get him. And Peter, like, runs, denies Jesus. But John, where do you see John? You see John at the foot of the cross when Jesus is being crucified. He's right there. He didn't go anywhere. You see John, Bible says that, He laid his head on the chest of Jesus, that he reclined. He was so close that he could hear Jesus' heart. He could hear the heartbeat of heaven. He was so close to Jesus. What are some of the things that are keeping you from being that close to Jesus in your life? What are those things that are just pulling you away, the simple distractions, the things that are keeping you from this intimate connection with the Lord. Because let me tell you, when you get and you push those things away, and it's really easy. I'm not saying they're bad things. I'm saying they're good things. You see, Jesus is in a home. He's an invited guest. And I'm going to, I'm going to read this to you. This is in Luke chapter 10. It says this, Verse 38, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted. Martha was distracted. But Martha was distracted. Jared has been distracted. By all the preparations that had to be made, She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. And then Jesus answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or or actually, indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better and what will not be taken away from her. If you could, I could imagine if this played out today. I would be so guilty of being a Martha. I would be screaming at my wife and kids, come on, Jesus is coming over. He is going to be here. He's walking on water. He's healing blind eyes. He's opening deaf ears. Hopefully he can open up your ears, son, because you don't ever listen to me. Okay, get it ready. Clean out the cupboards. Clean out the kitchen. Okay, we got we to gotta dust. We got to get the, the fan blades cleaned up there. I mean, I would be cleaning top to bottom. I would be just... I would be vacuuming. I would be asking the neighbors to clean their house, you know, you know, like, be like, just in case. And then I could have, I could envision the moment happens. He walks in, sits down at the couch, and then all of a sudden my wife, who was in there in the kitchen helping me prepare the food because we're going to prepare the best meal Jesus has ever ate. Man, he's usually handling fish and bread, and now we've got filet mignon, and we're just going to be like, oh, yeah, Jesus is going to be so happy for us, and maybe he'll multiply the, the kids' lunches, and then we won't have to go shopping at Costco this week. Okay, get ready. And then all of a sudden, I could, my wife just leaves me because Jesus walked in the room, and then she just sits there right next to him. And she's just hanging on every word that he's saying. And I could just imagine how frustrated I would be. Wife? Rib? Woman? (laughs) You've left me? We are one. You've left me? I'm up here in the kitchen sweating. We have the Messiah, the Savior of the world in our home, and you just deserted me. I'm going to ask the Lord to speak to you right now. Could have, I can envision this happening, real day scenario. And then I could be, have my apron on. I could run in all ragged and be like, have oven mitts on my hands. Jesus, look, your daughter My bride left me all alone in the kitchen. She's supposed to share each other's burdens. She's supposed to love me. Look at she's just sitting there listening to you, being lazy. Help her out, Jesus. Go ahead. Let her have it. And then Jesus is like, hey, 
No, 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 no. Actually, you don't know what season you're in, Jared. You're in a season where you should just be doing exactly what your wife's doing. Because you have lots of distractions. You have lots of things pulling on you. You have lots of things that you can spend your time. You can surf the web for hours and hours and not accomplish anything. You can reply to those messages all day long. You can get rid of all those emails and do all those things and feel really accomplished. Yet you're forgetting the one thing that's super important is being like your wife and sitting here and listening to my voice and hanging on every word. Friends, we have to get back to that place. We have to get back to that place where it's just you and Jesus. And this is not just a message that, or a story that's like 2,000 years ago. This is a story that we need right now in our own lives. And Jesus even wrote letters to churches that were doing really good things. He wrote a letter to the church in Ephesus in Revelation 3, and he's just like, hey, I know your deeds, you're doing some good stuff. Two th- you know, if it was like now, he's like, man, you guys are, you guys are cleaning up the streets. You're witnessing to people. You're, in, you're getting, man, you're doing such great thing. Youth convention's coming up. You're sending kids to youth convention. I'm so excited. You're really busy. You're doing my work. You're doing good things. But then Jesus, the only person that can see into the heart of humans, goes, but there's this one thing that I hold against you. You became a Martha. You got really busy. There's a lot of things I know that you're doing. I just want you to be like Mary, though. I want you to take that position where it's right here, where all you do is you hang on every word that I speak, and you push away those distractions. It doesn't mean you don't serve. It doesn't mean you don't do that, but I just want your heart back. Because if he can have your heart, that's where intimacy flows from. It's a heart-to-heart connection. It's John laying his head on the chest of Jesus while everybody's arguing at the table, the Last Supper. Who's going to be the greatest? Who's going to sit on your left? Who's going to sit on your right? And Jesus is like, someone's going to betray me here. And all the while, John's just like, I'm right where I need to be, right here. I have nowhere to go. I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a hurry. I know what I'm supposed to do. Ooh, I feel the presence of the Lord in here because it's quiet. I'm going to ask my wife to come up. She's going to play a little bit here. and I think there's a microphone for her. Let me see. Oh, you got it. All right, she's on it. So how do we live with this expectation that there's a harvest coming? Get with the harvester, spend time with him, sit at his feet, push away the distractions. How many of you would say you've got unnecessary distractions in your life right now? Oh, man, I feel the Lord saying this is a truth-filled church right here. I made a couple of decisions the earlier, um, earlier this year, and these are simply my decisions that the Holy Spirit asked me to do, and I'm not saying this is what you should do, but I heard the voice of the Lord. He spoke to me earlier this year, and he says, Jared, Martha, <laughs> you are distracted with many things, and I'm like, but Lord, look at my social media presence. I'm sharing about FCA. I'm doing all these great things for you. And the, the, the replies I get back on social media like, hey, I'm really glad you're doing this because I need to see this. I didn't have a dad that did this with their sons. I said, God, I'm doing really good things. And uh, he says, yeah, but I need your undivided attention in this season. So I want you to push away from that table right now. And I'm like, man, Lord, but... Uh, I've got ministry and you know that we're missionaries and how else are we supposed to get the good news out? How else are we going to keep funds in so we can continue to find those laborers and send them out in the harvest field? And he says, do you trust me? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, Lord, it's easy to say yes, but I've got things, Lord. I've got bills, you know. And he's like, do you trust me? And I'm like, I do trust you, Lord. I have nowhere else to turn. Just like in John 
666. Yeah, it's crazy. John 6, chapter 6, verse 66, the Bible says all these people, all these people start to desert Jesus. They start to leave him because he preached a really tough message. And then Jesus looks over at Peter and goes, what about you? Are you going to desert me too? Jesus looks over and Peter's like, hey, we got nowhere else to go, Jesus. We've left everything to follow you. You have the real words of eternal life. So I told the Lord, hey, I got no plan B. I'm all in with you. So I pushed away from that table. And it was amazing. The emotional margin that was restored in my life. Because you know that you're limited in your capacity of how much information you can actually consume on a daily basis. How many of you have um, this uh, Christian uh, streaming service called Netflix? Yeah. Makes you help, makes you raise your hand a little bit easier in church than if I said it was Christian. If you've ever been in my shoes where you have had somebody recommend a TV show, right? Or a series, right? Have you ever watched this and that? And you're like, no, I haven't. They're like, oh, get ready. Your mind's going to explode. And I'm like, okay, what is it? And they're like, there's 14 seasons. And I'm like, whoa, hold the bus right now. I don't know, man. I got, I want to try to sleep at night. And so you end up binge watching these shows, right? And it's pretty good, like, the way they make every show is this. They get you in the beginning, the middle's kind of boring, and then at the end they get you to hit next episode because they leave you on a cliffhanger. It's just what they do. And so you do that. If you do that maybe two or three times in a row, if you notice that you're just not fascinated like you used to be, you're not just excited anymore, your brain's kind of like oatmeal, it's because you're limited in your capacity to be fascinated. And what I found is that that should be reserved for the Lord. I should use that emotional energy and that investment at a different table because there's a big table that's prepared for you every morning you wake up. It's the news. Well, I have to be in tune with what's happening in the world. It's the news. It's your messages. It's your emails. It's your voicemails. It's your social media. All of these things are waiting for you. All they want to do is just distract you. They want to get you in a Martha mode and get you all productive. And I got these things. But there's another table that is prepared for you, the table of the Lord, where he opens up his word and deposits fresh heapings of revelation. And his presence just fills you with wonder. If you want a good sci-fi movie, just read Ezekiel chapter 1. Get in there, man. Just just get your mind exploded with what Ezekiel saw. You'll think he was doing some of the drugs you guys did in the 60s and 70s. Trust me. But what will happen is if you take that time and you reserve that for the Lord, all of a sudden, these other things won't become so important to you anymore. And you'll be like, I long to sit at his table to hang on every word. And what will start taking place is intimacy will start being restored. And trust, the foundations of covenant, intimacy and trust will start being restored in your relationship. And then all of a sudden you'll start to feel when he's excited, when he's happy, and you'll start to feel like when he's grieving, like what's wrong, Lord, what's going on? I need you to pray for so-and-so. Have you ever had that? You ever had just someone's name drop in your mind out of nowhere and you're like, where is that? That's the Lord. He's speaking to you. And he's got so much more because it's the year of the harvest. There's an awakening coming. It's already begun. But he also needs to awaken us sometimes. He needs us to be awakened. There's a scripture in Isaiah 50 verse 4. It says this. He wakens me morning by morning and opens my ears to hear like one being taught. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. He wants to open our ears to hear his voice. He wants to unclog them from all of the chaos that's surrounding our daily lives and the infusion of all this information that we can barely ingest ourselves. And he wants us to sit at his table 
to sit at his feet, to hang on every word, to have this intimate relation with, which relationship with him restored in a very personal way. It's not very hard, but it's one of the most sacrificial things you'll have to do. Because being married isn't very hard. It's still one of the most sacrificial things you're going to have to do. You're going to have to learn how to give of yourself to the Lord. And he's going to give, him, give of himself to you. It's a beautiful covenant. It's a beautiful relationship. It's a beautiful thing to live in, in, into intimacy and harmony with the Lord. Will you stand with me right now? I want to pray for you today. And those that are watching online, I want to pray for you as well. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, we have this great awakening that takes place. And the prophet Samuel is in the house of God and he's young. He's being basically groomed and raised in the presence of God. And the only voice that he knew was Eli, kind of his spiritual father that was taking care of him. His mom had dedicated him to the Lord all the days of his life. And then in one moment, all of a sudden, the voice of God came and started speaking not to Eli, but to Samuel. God bypassed Eli because of some of the failed opportunities to repent from sins and correct his children, and he went to Samuel. And all of a sudden, Samuel starts hearing God for the very first time, and then Samuel hears, runs to Eli and goes, you, you, what did you need? I'm here. You're yelling my name. I didn't yell your name. No. Go back to bed. Second time, same thing. Third time, all of a sudden, Eli is all of a sudden having this epiphany. Oh my gosh, I'm not hearing the Lord, but Samuel is. And then he says, Samuel, say this, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. The voice comes again. Samuel stops, doesn't run to Eli and says, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And all of a sudden, this prophet's ears were open. God starts to speak. And the whole, like... Samuel is one of the greatest prophets to ever live. The Bible says that none of his words ever fell to the ground. It means everything he prophesied came to pass. And it was Samuel that could see, that got to anoint the greatest king that ever lived in, in human history, besides King Jesus, which was King David. Samuel got to pour oil over his head. And I, I believe today, God wants to give you that kind of same awakening, that your ears would be open to his voice loud and clear, that his ear, that your ears would be tuned to his voice, Isaiah 50 verse 4, that they would be open, and that when you have the opportunity to sit at the table of distraction, you'll push it away and sit at the table of intimacy. You'll sit and hang on every word. We will stop being Marthas, just doing busy work and busy things, and sitting at the table of Netflix and just telling the Lord all the things that you're doing. Instead, you'll sit right next to him and hang on every word. It will change the dynamic of your life. It will change the trajectory. Everything will become clear. Everything will become different because intimacy will be restored. Why do we need intimacy? Because it's the year of the harvest. It's happening all around us, and God is trying to awaken us to the reality of what's taking place. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes? Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for all of those that are oh, um, hearing right now, Lord. God, just like you said in Revelation, after you corrected the church in Ephesus, you said, he that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. God, your Spirit is moving right now, and you are speaking. God, I just pray right now for your people, that they, those that are watching online, those that are here, that their ears would be open now. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're in the room right now, or maybe you're watching online and you say, I need to make, before I even sit at the table of the Lord, even before I do any of those things, I need to get my life back on track with Jesus. I've drifted away. I've, I've chosen a life of sin. I've chosen a life of disobedience. And I want to get my life restored back into the kingdom of God and continue to follow Jesus. If that's you, with every head bowed and every eye closed, would you just lift your hand to the Lord right now and say, that's me. Yep, I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. Anybody else? All right, you can put your hands down right now. So, Lord, I just bless those, those that are watching online and those that are here in this building right now. Lord, you saw their hands, God, and you are moving to them right now. You are moving 
in an intimate way very close to them right now in Jesus' name. And you are wrapping your arms of love around them. Because in Luke chapter 15, Lord, it talks about this parable of a son that was lost that ran out and wild parties and pursued a life of pleasure instead of a life of presence and Lord and then when he turns home and says what did I do I failed I messed up I wonder if my dad would take him back take me back Lord it was you you were the father in the story that runs after your child and embraces them and hugs them and restores them and puts a robe on their back and sandals on their feet and a ring on their finger and says don't even think about it you are not going to be shamed you are going to be restored. So, Lord, those that are coming back right now, thank you for them. Lord, bless them now. And I just pray for a great awakening. Now, if you're in the room right now and you say, Jared, I need to make a real, all, I just got to, I got to change a big thing in my life right now. I have sat at the wrong table for far too long. And I need to push away those distractions. And I just need to sit at the table, Lord. I don't want to be the Martha in the story, getting everything prepared and missing out on actually who I was preparing my house for. But I need to get, I need to get into that place of intimacy with God again. If that's you, will you just lift your hand to the Lord right now? And he's seeing your response. I'm not even counting hands, Lord, but you see these hands. Now, if your hand's up, lift both hands up right now. So, Lord, I'm here. I'm lifting my hands too, God. Because I know, Lord, there's still areas of my life, Lord, that just keep vying. They keep pulling me away from you, Lord. And then you keep drawing me by your spirit. And I just want you to just to tell the Lord what you're going to do for him. Right? Say, Lord, I'm going to say no to this. And I'm going to say yes to this, Lord. I'm going to just start spending more time with you. I'm going to change the music dial, Lord. I'm going to just start worshiping you more, Lord. I want to know you. Lord, just like in the beginning of a marriage, what did you do? You pursued your spouse. You were chasing after them. Je uh, in Jeremiah, the Bible says that the Lord says, hey, I remember the devotion of your youth, how you used to chase after me, how you used to pursue me. And I just hear the Lord saying, go back to that crazy love that you once had for me. Push away all those other lovers. Push away and get fixed on me. I want to be the one thing that you focus on. I want to be the one thing that you pursue. I want to be the God of your life, not these other idols, not these other gods, not these other things. I want to be the Lord of your life. So, Lord, I ask you, Lord, just fill the, your people right now. Speak to them like the only way that they can hear. Speak to them right now. Speak to them. Just worship right now. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Cause great are you, Lord. It's great are you, Lord. It's your breath in the lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in the lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in the lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Cause great are you, Lord. You're so great. You're so great. just hear the Lord saying that there's needs to be a non-negotiable in your life and that's him I I make really big sacrifices for coffee 
If I know I can't have coffee, I will bring it with me. If I'm traveling, I will make sure that I, I, because coffee's from the Lord. It's in Hebrews chapter 20. But I will make those sacrifices. I will make extra routes. I will bring my own water kettle, my own flame of fire to boil the water, my own little French press and my beans, because I love coffee. But do we have that same love for Jesus to where we go on vacation, we're like, no, kids, hold on. Before we do anything, we're going to spend time in the presence of the Lord. We got to just, hey, hold on a second. No, like, you got to understand this is a non-negotiable for my life. I just can't live and go on the rest of my day without the Spirit's leadership. Let me tell you, we need the Spirit's leadership in our life even now more than ever. Um, thank you. Yes, we should. Um, I want to do this, though. I feel this tangible response right now. I just feel like the Lord wants to do something in your heart. And maybe you're watching online and you just need to make a response. I don't know what it is about a response, but it just, it does something. Whether it's getting on your knees, but I, I want to invite you forward. If you want to make a decision this morning, you're just like, I want to re-surrender my heart, intimacy with the Lord. I just feel like if we could envision the Lord was up here, Jesus is up here. And you just want to say, I'm leaving the life of distraction, and I'm coming, and I want to sit at his feet. I want to hang on every word. Candace is going to sing that chorus again, and I want to invite you to come forward. And I feel like there's something that will break off your life. And I'm not doing this for anything else, but I know that I've been in that seat right there, feeling my heart beating out of my chest. And I said, hey, I was just waiting for that preacher man to, to give me a chance to respond to the message. And I just know something happens when we come to the altar. So, Candice, will you sing? And as she's singing, I just want to invite you to come out of your chairs and just meet the Lord right here. is doing something so strong right now. It is so intimate right now. I want to, I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to mess it up, but I, 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 I feel this really strong that there's some of us in this room right now and there's been a, there's been like this feeling like life keeps going in a bad, it's like you always, your thoughts just keep going into this like negative Whatever it is, you think worst case scenario. And I just, I want the Lord, the Lord's going to touch you today. And he's going to turn your thoughts from always going worst case scenario to best case scenario. And you are going to be just feeling faith right now. You're just going to feel it. And it's going to feel like somebody, people are going to be like, did you 
get medication from your doctor? Are you taking some street drugs? What's wrong with you? And you're going to be like, no, the Lord touched me at an altar. The Lord touched me at church today. His magnificent power is still real. So, Father, I just pray right now, Lord. I even say on my mind, Lord, don't let me, when somebody goes, I need to talk to you. Don't let me go worst case, Lord. Let me go best case. Let me expect a good report, Lord. Let me expect to hear a praise report. Let me expect to hear that children are coming back to the Lord, that bodies have been healed, that marriages have been restored. Let me expect to hear something good, Lord, because I know that you're working. I know that our prayers have been heard, God. I know that you're up to something right now, Lord. It's harvest season. Lord, it's a harvest in our families, Lord. It's a harvest in our finances. It's a harvest in our marriage. It's a harvest in our coworkers, Lord. You are bringing, you are the Lord of the harvest, Lord. And we believe it right now in Jesus' name that you are not done with the Golden State. You are not done with California. You are going to set a great awakening. You are going to pour out your spirit on all flesh. So we trust you now, Lord. And we say, Lord, use us. We'll be the laborers. Send us into the harvest field. Send us into our neighborhoods. Send us into our family gatherings that are coming coming up at Thanksgiving and Christmas, Lord. Let us not be bold. Let us not be ashamed any longer, but give us the courage. Words laced with love, Lord, to share what you've done in our lives and our hearts, God. Let the overflow of intimacy permeate the tables around the holidays that are coming up, God. Let them say, you've been sitting at a different table. I can tell you've been with the Lord. I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your countenance, Lord. Let your people be known, Lord, that they've been sitting at your table, God sitting with you, laying their heads on your chest, hanging on every word like Martha, like Mary was, Lord. Please, God, we need a revival, God. We need an awakening, God. But first do it in our hearts. But first do it in our lives. First do it in us, God. Lord, so that we could have this passion. Lord, so that we could have this desire, Lord. So that we could live by faith again, Lord. That we could walk by faith and not by sight. That we could actually have a heart that beats like your hearts. Get our hearts in rhythm with your heart, Lord. God, and when we feel something's out of sync, when we we sense there's a, a tremble in the spirit, Lord, we would immediately go to you and say, what's going on, Lord? What's happening? I I feel something different. I don't feel your spirit resting on me like it used to. What is that? What is it that I'm sensing, Lord? Give us that kind of intimacy with you, Lord. We need it in this day and in this hour, Lord. We need it, Lord, with all of what we're facing, God, but we trust you. Oh, I just feel the Lord. The Lord just wants to love on you this morning. He wants to encourage you this morning. He wants to know that there's more for you than against you. One day when you get to heaven and you get to see the DVDs and you get to see your real Netflix, you will see all of the things the Lord did on your behalf. How he fought battles for you. How he stepped in and spared your life. How he continued to give you grace and mercy even when you didn't deserve it. He is a God. He is slow and compassionate, full of mercy and abounding in love. This God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Some of you have only known the God that you're afraid of, but God wants to introduce you to the side of Him where it's unconditional love. The God that truly loves you and sacrificed everything for you. Fall in love with that, God. (laughs) Yes. Yes, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Pour out your mercy. Pour out your love. Pour out your mercy. Just receive this morning. Just receive. Don't be distracted, Martha. (laughs) Just sit at his feet, worship him, listen to him.
hear the Lord saying to I am faithful I am faithful some of you need to repeat it and say God I believe you are faithful you need to break the lies and the agreements that you've made unknowingly some of you believe that God is not faithful you have been you feel like he's let you down you just need to confess it with your mouth God you are faithful God you are faithful God I trust you God I give you every part of my heart God I give you every part of my life Lord, I trust you with everything. Some of you, I just feel this right now. The Lord is saying, like, do you have these reservations? And the why a, a relationship cannot have intimacy is because one person is reserved. One person is holding back. And the Lord is saying, I'm not holding anything back from you. And he's just saying, open your heart up right now. Open your heart up right now. Give me that place of your heart. Give me that brokenness. Give me that disappointment. Give me what you feel like. Just hand it over to the Lord right now. So, Father, I just pray, Lord, they can just hand you over their disappointment. They can hand you over that, what felt like a broken dream. Lord, they can just hand it over to you right now. And then they can walk away and say, God, I trust you. I don't understand. I don't know why this didn't happen the way I expected. But Lord, 
you have your thoughts are higher than my thoughts your ways are higher than my ways and i'm going to trust you i don't i cannot be lord of my life you are the lord of my life you are the creator of all things and i just feel like the lord wants to do a great exchange he is going to give you contentment in that place of your heart where you've been holding back angst and bitterness and resentment and you've been holding it back and the lord just even those that are watching online right now even if we're still online i don't know maybe they cut the cameras but perhaps you're still online the lord wants to heal that area of your heart that one reserved spot you're like lord i trust you in this area in this area but i can't because this happened i just hear the lord saying no i'm gonna i'm gonna touch you right now i'm gonna take it and even in your greatest disappointment if you can hand that to him you will have a place of intimacy back with the lord and you've been wondering why you feel distant why you can't sense and that's the that's the root right there that's the root just hand it over to him right now just hand it over to him right now there's going to be powerful breakthrough that's going to take place powerful breakthrough in jesus name all right i'm going to ask my sister to come up and land the plane for us today and I want to say thank you for your patience while the Lord ministered. Amen. Why don't we thank Pastor Jared this morning? Amen. What an awesome word that he gave this morning. We believe it, right? The harvest is coming. The harvest is coming, Lord. This morning, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you, God, because you have spoken to us. We have felt your Holy Spirit in this church. We have felt your Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. Why don't you get up this morning, and we're going to close our service with um, our Cree, I guess, that we do every time. We're going to all say it together, so if you guys can please help me this morning, we're going to uh, say it out. So, church, we are God's treasured possession. Our Heavenly Father is proud of us. He watches over us, and He will take care of us. We have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, and He will help us. Because of Jesus Christ, we can be anything, and we can do anything. We are the hands and feet of Jesus in a lost and dying world. We are difference makers. Nothing can take away God's greatness in our lives. We are are blessed. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. God bless you.